And today, if you ask me, the boom in the embedded, the last five years, it is more automotive. Mm -hmm. And more of adoption I can see from uh, uh, from the, the, the aero and other domains happening into the new gen mm -hmm. uh, industries like automotive. How do you see this transition, especially, I want to see your views also, you know. So, looking forward, I think there are many, many drivers on embedded devices, if it's uh, airplanes or is it general aerospace defense or if it's in the automotive industry, for example, new, new ways of developing software. That is the influence of the tech industry is how we develop software, how we are enabling new features while the device is in the air, on the, on the road. So really updating. With that comes also coding guidelines and compliance with, for cybersecurity. Even if you update your car, you want to have that it's safe and secure. And these are really two different things. So that is, that is one influence I massively see. Also, this enables in the past, often when a car was on the road, there was not many updates coming in. Maybe over when you went to a garage, you get a new software version, but not on a really regular basis. Nowadays, you, you get updates regularly on your cars and it's, yeah, it's, it's an IoT device with wheels, but with much, much higher safety and security requirements. But you would like to have this new functionality in, in your infotainment, better driver assistance functionality to make, to make it a, a better product for the, for the customer. We spoke about you know, uh, the, the evolution, uh, the trends, and the challenges, mm -hmm. and uh, collaboration between you know, multiple domains, and even geographies, countries. Another interesting thing which comes to my mind is, where are we going? Yeah, you know, with, with uh, all these uh, interesting things we talk about, AI, uh, software getting overloaded everywhere. What are your thoughts? I often think, for example, when we talk about processes, for example, it's agility. The, the industry is getting more and more agile, how they develop software, more flexible, how they're doing requirements, how they're adapting requirements. When it comes to AI, it will simply enable software developers. I, I'm not one of them who's believing that AI will replace all of the coders. What, what I see is it's simply enabling the software developer to write better code, to test faster, to get more functions on the embedded systems. And this is, but this, this evolution will come with AI. And yeah. These are two really, really big Still, trends. we need the compilers, still we need the debuggers. And probably the way we <laughs> test systems could slightly vary. I mean, the AI yeah. could be an enabler, yeah. uh, a helping hand in making things happen. Probably, uh, I, I hear people talking about whenever there was the change, people go resist, fight. Mm -hmm. We should fight against change. And there's another category of people say, let's embrace a change and yeah. let's utilize what is good in that. And uh, like uh, the, the NVIDIA founder says that, you know, uh, those who embrace AI will rule the world. Yeah. Those who fight against it, it get killed. I also think you need to embrace the change. You, 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 you need to see where does the new technology help you? How can I adapt the technology to make our products better? To fight it and get rid of it, that's not a solution. Really the question is, how does it help to make embedded systems better? It's like, you know, two years back, I, I am very active in the HR fraternity. We have a discussion happening and somebody said they, they implemented HR, replace HR with AI boards and so many things. In, in, in six months, 60% of the employees left. <laughs> so that is a disaster. You know, how you adopt, when to adopt the methodologies and practices, it should be implemented in the proper way. And in, we are in the safety industry. And most yeah. of the time, our customers ask us, hey, uh, what is stopping you from embracing AI? I said, nothing wrong in embracing it, mm -hmm. but then who will be liable? <laughs> so there should be a, a, you know, a calculated risk somebody should be taking, and uh, the models, what you're building, is it getting matured? Who will be taking the liability at the end of the day? So uh, from a developer point of view, fine, I passed it, but at least at the testing and certification, somebody has to own it. And till then, yes, I think we need to be having a slightly cautious approach. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it can do wonders. At the same time, it can also do disasters. <laughs> yeah, I think AI is really ha so helping, and all of the standard committees are actually into it. To how can we 
leverage AI in safe systems or in safety and security critical systems. And, and that's really, we need to work on how do we use it? What can we use out of it? Where does it bring value? And from that, I think it, it will involve. It, it will bring Even in your industry, you know, mm -hmm. you, you see everybody talking about multi-core mm -hmm. because of, you know, the processing, intensive processing yeah, requirements yeah. from the customers. And uh, how was the transition, you know, from a single core to multi-core as an engineering professional? What was mm -hmm. the really challenge? I mean, <laughs> the, the interesting part, and uh, I always see this with the with, with the Aurix family. When the Aurix came and you first had really multi-core functionality or op options with multi-core, there were conferences about multi-core. There was the embedded multi-core conference. How do you leverage? How do you use? How do you make the communication between cores? How are you using all of this new potential? And now, 20 years later, it's often, for example, in many industries in the embedded world, it's standard to use multi-core systems. And it will be the same. We will, I think, see many embedded AI conferences in the future, how to use AI in the embedded space. How do you test with AI in systems? How can I help writing requirements with AI? And in 20 years, all of these conferences will mainly gone. One or two will stick, but the rest will, will go. And it's the same with multi-core. It's now a standard. Everybody's using it. So in, in simple words, one is the complexity. Other one is how do you address the de increasing demand for functionalities from the customers, mm -hmm. probably with more code. Uh, either hand code or auto-generated or whatever, yeah. whatever it could be a mix or even taking from the legacy.